Let's start off with Northern Illinois. The Huskies, uh, I could not have been more wrong about this team last year. Uh, Thomas Hammock is the coach. They went 9-5, and five, lost the bowl game. Uh, it was a weird, weird ending to the season against Coastal Carolina. Uh, they went 6-2 and two in conference. Uh, you know, returning production, number two in the country, 87%. Uh, they return 88% of their offensive production. They return 85% of their defensive production. And yet, if you look at their roster strength, they are still number 104 in the country. Uh, there's not a ton of talent. They did have some pretty big losses here. The wide receiver, Richie, uh, linebacker, Lance DeVoe Jr., the running back, uh, Jevion Ducker, or Jay Ducker, uh, has transferred over to Memphis. You know, you lost the, the the big time punter that was able to kind of flip the field position there. Their short yardage back, uh, Clint Redkovich is uh, is gone. Like, and then their center, uh, uh, Braden Patteon. Like, they lose what seemed like a lot to me, really important pieces, and yet they bring back a ton of production. So I found that to be odd. Um, here's what you need to know about the offense: uh, they avoided negative plays. They converted eighty three percent of 30 fourth down attempts. Uh, most of their fourth down attempts were short yardage. This is a team that really, really liked to run the football. Uh, Rocky Lombardi is the quarterback. He averaged 5.9 yards per non-sack carry last year, threw for 2,500-plus yards and 15 touchdowns. He was way better than he was at Michigan State. Um, my question is, what ends up happening without the wide receiver, Richie, and without that running back, Ducker? Uh, they still got dudes, but... You know, it, it's going to be interesting. They got Ontario Brown uh, at running back. They got Travion Rudolph. Uh, sorry, Travon Rudolph. Um, they still got some playmakers. They got some things going on on offense, and they were able to do things with that running game that were surprising. Uh, you know, it, when you look at the defense, it's a whole different thing. Do you remember how bad that defense was? I mean, they were number 123 yeah. in defensive PPA per drive. Um, they tried to fix that a little bit. They went out, they hired... Uh, a new co-defensive coordinator, Nick Benedetto from Samford in the FCS level. Uh, they were dreadful last year, but they were number 24 in allowing only 41% of fourth down conversions. The fourth down conversions, they were plus 42% margin between those two. I don't know that that will be replicable again. I don't know that anybody's had anything close to that uh, in, in quite some time. They had 16 freshmen. They played on defense last year, which could be part of the problem as to why they were so bad. Uh, 16 freshmen got 160-plus snaps, and that includes seven linemen. So they could be or maybe should be better, but are we sure that trial by fire actually works? I don't know that I can say that. Um, on top of that, they went 7-3 and three in one-score games last year. They were 5-0 and oh in games decided by two points or less or overtime. Um, which that's is the step, that's the step I was yeah, looking at. which is insane because the, their turnover margin was number one hundred in the country. <laughs> like, <laughs> give me your thoughts here because this team made no sense last year, but they you could tell that they were well coached. They were number nineteen in penalties per game last year. Um, you you hope that experience will help this team improve a little bit, but I don't know that you can really improve on what they did last year, going nine and five and winning the MAC title. Um, again, cheers to Thomas Hammock. Uh, I've got this team at seven and five. I'm I'm curious uh, what you're looking at with this team. I've got them seven and five as well. Exactly the same thing. I think they've got a tough non-con schedule. In uh, I mean Vanderbilt, I, I think they'll they'll handle. Um, you know, getting an SEC win will be big for them. But but Tulsa's been no joke. Kentucky is obviously a beast. We think they're going to be really good this year. Um, I, I think in conference they're going to do really well. You know, I, you know, I think they could win five, six games in conference and, uh, you know, whatever. But it, all those one-score games scare me because at some point in time, all we need is the ball to bounce a little bit funny one way or the other. Exactly. And half of them, and their record massively swings. Massively swings. Still think they're a good team. They're obviously a well-coached team. We talked about the penalties. That's a coaching thing. Um, that's all about discipline. Lost a lot of talent, bringing some new guys in. We'll see if the new guys are as good as the old guys. And, you know, seven and five is exactly where I got them. That's, I, I've got them actually six and two again in the conference. Um, yeah, see, I, th I thought the same thing. I got one coin flip game. I basically have them four, two, and one. Uh, and I got a coin flip game in there. Um, but that's kind of it. 
Yeah, it's, yeah, I've got them losing to Vanderbilt, but it wouldn't shock me if they did beat Vanderbilt. I've got them losing to Tulsa. It wouldn't shock me if they beat Tulsa. Uh, That's right. This is, uh, That's right. I, think they'll, I think they'll split those that series. Like the, This is the math I'm using. Is I don't know that they'll win this game. I don't know if they'll win that game. But I'm, I don't think they'll go 2-0 and against Tulsa and Vandy. I also don't think they'll go 0-2 against Tulsa and Vandy. That's kind of how I'm figuring this out. Makes, makes sense. Uh, the defensive line looks a, a little weak. Uh, but again, I, you know I, we're we're doing this based on like recruiting rankings and everything else. Uh, the back seven looks good. Like they, I know they got some good talent uh, in the back seven, but I'm I'm curious about the defensive line. Again, they had 16 freshmen play 160 plus snaps on defense. It, it was trial by fire. It was you get in here and we are going to start playing immediately. And they did just enough. The defense was not good. You're going to need that offense uh, to have that same kind of success uh, because, like, their PPA margin last year was number 93, and yet their offensive PPA per drive was number 11. The defense was number 123. Like, you couldn't have a more vast difference between the two. So we'll we'll see what they end up doing this year, but uh, but we're, we're both looking at about 7-5-ish, and, five-ish, and, uh, and I like that. I like that. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.